Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Today I wanted to encourage you to increase your efforts and get motivated or stay motivated to keep adding to your food storage stockpile and your prepper pantry. When you're shopping for foods to add to your food storage stockpile, it's always a great idea to first look over what you already have and what are the gaps or what are the things that you've been eating more of that you want to replace or increase the amount that you have. Then you should probably be thinking about a budget. Don't ever go into debt stocking up for the future. You want to pay as you go. Budget for your food storage stockpile. The world isn't running out of food today or tomorrow, but they could be in short supply and higher prices in the future. So it's a great idea to continue to add and build up the stockpile that you have. Do it a little at a time. Even if you can only add one item the next time you go to the store, do it. Take it home, set it aside, and watch your food stockpile grow. Lately, I've been just adding $10 at a time, maybe a little more, but I decided to increase my efforts. I had the chance to go to the store, and these are the items that I bought to add to my food storage stockpile on this shopping trip. So I was planning on breakfast, lunch, dinner. I wanted to make sure that I had foods that could fit into each of those categories. The first item I bought was a big bag of the Krusty's Pancake Mix. This is so simple, you just add water. It comes in a very sturdy container. If you don't eat this much of it, you can also buy it in a smaller box, but make sure that you have enough going forward. This lasts a very long time and I've been pleased with the results. Plus it's summertime, my family will be visiting more and I'm sure my grandkids would enjoy granny making them some pancakes. Think about what goes with your pancakes, syrup, make sure that you get some. I even chose a butter flavored syrup so that if we don't have butter, maybe we're out at granny camp at my Alaska off-grid cabin, we don't necessarily have every single thing we'd have in the house at home, but there's butter flavored pancake syrup. So however you're planning your meals, make sure that you're planning for the sides and the other ingredients that go with it so that you have a complete meal and you don't just make pancakes and then you're disappointed. My family also likes to eat pancakes with peanut butter and it's also nice topped with some jam. I picked up a jar of Orrington Farms broth base. It's chicken flavored bouillon. This is great to season the meals that you make. If you have plain rice, plain beans, maybe you have some pasta, you can jazz up vegetables. There's all different ways that you can add broth bases into the meals that you're making for additional flavor. Plus it can last quite a long time in your food storage stockpile. Someone did leave me a comment recently that they did have bouillon go spoiled in their food storage stockpile. So do pay attention and be checking over your stockpile so that the foods you have are still useful. And don't buy things you're not willing to use and rotate. Your prepper pantry should be a working pantry and you should be working your way through it, not just stockpiling it. You're not collecting baseball cards or beanie babies. You're stocking up on things that you actually use. I bought four cans of the Campbell's Chunky Pub Style Chicken Pot Pie Soup. I think it's pretty tasty and so it's something that I'm willing to eat. So I can continue to rotate it through my pantry. If I use some, then I want to buy some more to replace it. The new cans of soup go in the back of the shelf. You push your other stock forward and add the new cans to the back so that you're continuing to replenish and refresh your supply so that the first in first out. The oldest food is pushed to the front and you rotate that and use it up first. So that way you're making sure that you don't just keep adding to the front, adding to the front. And then in the very back is the oldest food that ends up maybe spoiling and going to waste. So make sure that you're taking the additional effort to push the old food forward and put the new cans behind. I bought three big cans of the Hereford beef and gravy. This is pretty nice. Canned meat lasts a long time, and so it's nice to have the extra supply. Yes, it's nice to have fresh meats. It's nice to have food in your freezer, but then if it's canned and it's in your shelf, you don't need to worry about what if the power goes out, how am I going to keep my food fresh longer? It's already going to last for several years, and I know that it's packaged safely. I know that it's going to last many years past even the date on the can, and then I have a good supply of meat that I enjoy eating meat, so that's what I want to have. I bought a four pack of the large canned chicken. Something I learned in the past is when they're sealed up like this, take them apart as soon as you get them home. 
I discovered a few months ago that one on the bottom had actually popped open. Maybe it got jostled around in shipping. I don't know for sure, but it was. I had them all sealed up together, and then I noticed there was a problem with the whole four pack, and I wasn't sure. And then it turned out the one on the very bottom had popped open and it was leaking. So if when you bought your food, if there is a problem, you don't know if you leave it hidden inside. You want to inspect your food and then keep an eye on it over time. That's the only time I ever had a problem with a pop top can, but I don't believe that the can actually failed. I think it was something in the shipping and the packaging. I stocked up on 12 cans each of vegetables that I like to eat, mixed vegetables and green beans and interestingly the green beans were half the price of the mixed vegetables. Remember the days when they were all the same? They're not anymore so you want to make sure that you're checking the prices when you're choosing them especially if dollars are tight. You want to make sure that you're getting the best value for your grocery dollars. I like the Chef Boyardee mini ravioli, so I bought 12 cans. These are great. You know, you want food that you can just pop it open and eat it if you had to, if you're in an emergency. Do you have to heat it up? No. But would it be better if you did? Yes. It's nice if you can bake it a while, even sprinkle it with fresh cheese. Just like when you cook any kind of pasta sauce, if you put this in a pan and you cook it a little longer, it actually helps it taste better. So if you find a food that you enjoy eating, make sure that you have extras of it. I don't care for some of the things like the beefaroni, so I don't want to add that to my food storage stockpile. But you can always take one home and try it if you haven't ever, and make sure that you find out which ones you do like before you stock up. I bought 12 cans of Hormel chili with beans. The last time I shopped for chili, the shelf for just plain chili was bare. The inexpensive ones were gone. They had lots of much more expensive chili on hand, but that wasn't something that I wanted to stock up on because it was so expensive. And that's one of the issues we may find going forward. If we can't get the foods that we want, we have to choose something else and you may end up paying far more for not necessarily the foods that we choose. So if you see things that you like and it's a price you can afford, get a few extras, stash them away rotate your food storage stockpile then the food you're eating in the future was at today's prices which are going up and so you'll be saving money even into the future because i already have a nice supply of beans and rice i didn't buy any more of that but if you don't have dried beans and big bags of rice get a little more keep adding it to your stockpile even if you can only afford a one pound bag yes it's cheaper per pound if you buy a big bag but if you don't have enough money to buy the big bag at least get a small bag it's better to have something rather than nothing and don't tell yourself well i'll save up and then i'll buy it because the opportunity may be gone or the prices may still continue to go up just look at what some of the prices are on, say, cars and houses. The prices, we, it's like you can't save up fast enough to keep up with how the prices are going up. And so food is an example of why you want to stock up a little at a time. If you can't put together $3 today, how are you going to put together $10 next year? And it could be even more difficult. And that's what we could be facing in the future. Nobody knows what's coming, but we do know there are challenges and it doesn't seem to be changing. The trajectory of prices and inflation doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon. So the more prepared we are, the better off we're going to be. That's why you want to increase your efforts and stay motivated so that you will have the things you need so that you can make the best of whatever the future brings. If you have any suggestions on other foods that we should be stocking up on while we have the opportunity, leave it in the comments below. We can learn a lot from each other. We need to keep building our community so that we know there are like-minded people out there. Maybe they don't live next door or on our street, but they're out there. We can build that community together by sharing information. I hope you'll like my video, share my video, and please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.